We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Commissioners Mary Lawson Brown, Rufus Ford, and Justin Campbell, and Tammy Mikowski. You're hereby notified that a special call meeting of the City Commission is hereby called to be held at the regular meeting place of the City Commission at City Hall 201 North 2nd Street in the City of Palakka to begin at 6 p.m. or soon as possible thereafter on Monday, August 12, 2019. The purpose of the meeting is to consider a proposal for Florida Aviation Professionals LLC to lease Airport Building W4 and one half of Hangar W9 at the Palak Municipal Airport. Item table on 8-8 of 19. Please govern yourselves accordingly. We both will let the roll call. Commissioner <coughs> Rufus Warren. Present. Commissioner Justin Campbell. Present. Commissioner Tammy McCaskill. Here. Commissioner Mary Lawson Brown. Present. Commissioner Cheryl Hill. Here. Thank you. I haven't already established um, our pledge and our invitation. We'll move forward into item, the only item on this agenda, uh, which is proposal and request for lease. Um, I'll turn it over at this time to Mr. Holmes, who's had an opportunity to vet the issues of the force. In your packet, you have a lease agreement. There are actually two lease agreements. I don't think you have the second agreement. It's very similar. But you have a separate lease agreement for each of the two structures that are being leased. One of the structures, the one that you have featured in the agreement that's before you, is the hangar. Um, hangar is actually one half of uh, Executive Hangar W9. And the other lease agreement applies to the old terminal building. You'll recall when you, you were here before that I pointed out some issues with regard to the lease rate uh, because it was so, so, so very small uh, with regard to the old terminal building. Um, subsequently, as a matter of fact, today, Mr. Yule uh, explained to me that they had put the wrong numbers in in terms of the amount of square footage of the terminal. The original lease proposal had 2,929 square feet and the old terminal. And Mr. Yule explains to me that that amount is actually only about 1,200 square feet, which which obviously makes the per the, the, the rate per square foot much much different. Um, with that having been said, I don't have a problem with the um, the lease rate. Um, the other terms that the, the commission asked us to talk about, one had to do with the term. We have talked about whether or not they might be willing to go something more than a year. It's my understanding that they aren't uh, interested in going more than a year in the lease. They want the option or they'd like to have the option of perhaps uh, renewing for a second or third term. But, it, but it, in terms of, at least it's my understanding, that in terms of the lease that they sign, they only want a 12-month lease. And then lastly, the question had to do with insurance. Um, actually, you'll see at utilities where I had a question mark where they're going to pay all the utilities even though, all, even though they were only occupying one half the hangar. The answer to that question at the last meeting was yes, they do plan to pay all the utilities for the hangar, uh, even though they're only occupying half of it because I guess there's not much activity going on in the remainder of it. The only other question had to do with insurance, both as to um, uh, coverage and limits. Um, it's my understanding that um, that the coverage is two million for personal injury and death, and five hundred thousand for um, property damage. Those coverages are the same as I recall, off the top of my head, that we have in the water taxi agreement. They would appear to me to be uh, okay, appropriate. I mean, naturally. When I represent the lessor, I want as much coverage as possible. But um, John tells me that he checked with uh, another, at least one other airport, and their, their coverages were similar. And again, I think it's the same thing we've got in the water taxi agreement. So, it, from my perspective, doesn't make uh, a lot of sense to treat them differently than the water taxi. Let me get to insurance because I'm having a hard time getting to it right now. Let me get to the insurance. Well, insurance, I see it here. No, so this one still has one million two hundred thousand. I thought we we had said it was going to be two million one hundred. If I'm 
Okay. Okay. It's, it's spelled out two million, then the parentheses one. I'm sorry, that's a misprint. So it's actually spelled out one on both. So let's call that two. And I think that it's spelled out, John, in the other one. At least I don't have it in front of me. It's spelled out two, two. So let's assume that, or let's, if we could contingent our discussions on the fact that it's two million personal injury and bodily uh, injury, personal injury and death, and 500,000 uh, property damage. I'm sorry. The 500 is, but not the two million. The other copy, I think the other copy does have the two million. Um, and then the only other question that I had had to do with flight operations um, because technically this is a premises policy and depending upon how the policy is written it would normally apply to incidents that occur on the premises. It's possible in our world that the city would get sued for flight operations and that, that might not be covered by our premises insurance. You'd have to look at the policy to tell. For instance, as Carol and Justin, some of you know, homeowners insurance actually covers things that doesn't, a lot of times covers things that doesn't happen at the home. But I wouldn't know that without looking at the policy. So I had asked John about some form of flight operations insurance. Um, it doesn't matter to me who carries, how it's carried or what the insurer is. I was just looking for some peace of mind that they had some flight operations insurance and I don't know what the answer to that question is as I sit here right now. Let me go first for just a second. Uh, first of all, let me apologize for contributing to some of the confusion at the last meeting with uh, providing the wrong square footage for the terminal building. And, and, uh, I'm sorry about that. Now let Daniel talk about insurance. Do you want to go right into the insurance questions, or would you like me to go ahead and give him my presentation again? We, we, we don't really need a presentation again. Right. I just need to go to the insurance question. Okay. Uh, yeah. we'll go ahead with your question then. I don't fully understand what you were asking a second ago. If you just give me the question one more time. You bet I will. No problem. My, my statement is that the insurance that we require has to do with premises insurance, premises liability, okay. meaning our facility that we own that you're going to be occupying. The easiest example of what it would cover would be if somebody tripped on the site or walked into a prop on the flight line or something like that, then there's conventional coverage of that kind of insurance would apply. My question had to do with what happens if somebody is involved in an accident with one of your instructors or rental on one of your airplanes. Um, it's conceivable that the city would be sued there too because in today's world, we <coughs> just sue everybody who uh, has any nexus whatsoever to the defendant. Um, so my question was, and when I talked to John this afternoon, he indicated that he had checked with the land and that they had a million dollar policy on their uh, airport for flight operations or flight instruction. And I told John this afternoon when he told me about the air and the square footage, that'd be great. If you had a million dollars that applied directly to flight operations, um, then that'd be fantastic because then the city would have the comfort level of knowing that we have premises protection, we had uh, for bodily injury and property damage, and we had a separate coverage or separate uh, policy or separate uh, protection for flight operations, even if it wasn't on the airport. So the plane falls out of the sky and interlocking, not on the airport, we still would have some protection if we got sued. And uh, But then today, in talking, or just a few minutes ago, and talking to John, he indicated that, that I guess there's an issue with, with you having that, or you might have it to a separate provider or something like that. So if you want to address that issue, that'd be helpful to me. I'll be glad to give you all the information I, I know about it, because this is when we first had this idea, we spoke with AOPA, and if you fly, you might know they're, uh, they're sort of an advisory council. Air Craft Owners and Pilots Association, for those of you who don't know, AOPA is a... Right, so they can, they do have some lawyers on staff there, and we, we ask these questions, and the, the way it was explained to me is that the, the policy for instruction on the aircraft, it's insured up to a million dollars for you know, rental and instruction, is that for the building that you're doing flight instruction in, as long as it's used for, for training and you don't have a sports bar in your flight school as well, then it would cover for that up to the million dollars because it's, it's being used for the flight training. But obviously if you're doing things other than 
just using it as a flight school and then they're not going to cover that sort of a thing. But I was explaining the policy will extend to the building. As well, you're, you're talking about having the same policy through AOPA deal with your premises as well as your airplane. You're not talking about having policy for the premises and then your AOPA policy separate. You're talking about just having one policy cover everything. The way I was explained it to on the phone is that's what it appears to me. Um, and of course, we'll be happy to change whatever needs to get fixed up there. But yeah, I'd have to read it to see. But normally, I wouldn't expect that to be the case. I would, I, I, in other words, normally I would expect that AOPA policy that applies to an airplane. I wouldn't expect it to give you premises protection. I just, I just wouldn't. Um, I mean, somebody's out there for whatever reason and trips over something, and we, which we have had happen, by the way. I wouldn't expect that AOPA policy to cover it. So. I was assuming that you were going to have premises liability, and all I was talking about was whether you had airplane liability. I wouldn't have a problem if your AOPA policy that covered your airplane is a million bucks. I wouldn't have a problem with it satisfying the issue of your flight operations, but I, I have I have some discomfort with it being what, what covers the premises. I do have some discomfort with that. Well, that's understandable. It is certainly odd. You wouldn't expect your car insurance to cover your house, and, and I, I can understand the confusion. And That's why it was a hard thing for me to understand at first, too. But there is a big difference between insurance for flight training and just having airplane insurance. So that's probably something we should print that contract and you know, we should sit down and read it rather than me trying to tell you what I think. Yeah, for your own protection, too. Yeah. For your own protection, too. Of course, yeah. So I, I just looked it up. They actually have a new hangar protection policy with AOPA, POA. So it may be that may be what they're talking about. Looks like they introduced it in 2015. So it, it, like the mayor will tell you, you know, you, insurance is like any other contract. The coverage is spelled out in the policy. And so it could, it could cover a lot of things, it could cover not a lot of things. So really the, the detail is the question of, of, of the policy that you have. If it, if it extends to the premises, no question asked. And the example you gave is a good one. My auto policy isn't going to cover my house if somebody trips on it. And that's a good, a good analogy. So that's, it's just a matter of us having coverage on those fronts from my perspective. I can understand that perspective. And then may I also address the, the uh, way I uh, discussed it this afternoon and uh, we'd like to say that you know they've been talking about a year uh, they've been talking about a year lease the whole time this this discussion has been going on but I'd like to go and I think uh, they, they would agree to it that uh, we change the wording on that that it would would be a current one-year lease with the language added to renew and on an annual basis and be subject to negotiated rental rates after year two. So I think that's, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll change the wording in the rental agreement to, to do that uh, because uh, uh, now with the, with the change in the numbers, uh, you know, the rental rates went up I mean, per, per square foot, which puts us you know, close in line to what we think it should be so uh, not, not changing any dollar amount for him or his rent. My issue is, my issue is we're about to spend seven thousand bucks on a one-year lease, and if we're going to make any type of concession as it relates to this particular project, I, I'd rather see a multi-year lease in place. Um, and that's kind of been what we've done in the other situations. Um, I just don't. I just don't think that a one-year lease with six months of of reduced rent makes a whole bunch of sense from a financial standpoint for what we're looking at. I mean, if we're in the if we're in the, the business of breaking even um, off of what we spend, then I, I just don't. I think it makes a whole lot of sense. I think, you know, the question before was, are you willing to enter into a multi-year lease? The response was yes. You know, I think at minimum a two-year lease at least makes some sense as to us understanding that at least the rental income is going to deal with whatever costs are associated um, 
with what's in place. I, I think our rent is probably as cheap as you're going to find rent anywhere in this region. And at the end of the day, if you're operating right now without a base, having the, the least expensive base in the region makes a whole bunch of sense. And the, the base that's surrounded by everywhere makes a bunch of sense. And if you feel like the business is going to be viable in two years, is not out of the realm of possibility for a commercial lease. I can understand uh, why, how you see that, and especially since you, you're looking at a $7,000 air conditioner or somewhere thereabouts, it sounds like. Uh, I want you to understand that the request for a one-year lease isn't so I can move in a year. This is a startup company, and we all know they're not guaranteed to succeed. Uh, there, there needs to be a little protection in there for myself, uh, financially speaking, just in case this goes south. I don't expect it to. I expect it to go very, very well, but you have to think about the alternatives there. Um, addressing the, the cheapest rent on the block, that, that is true, you are the cheapest place, but only by a couple hundred dollars. Only by a couple hundred dollars. I mean, talking about a couple hundred a month, however, you know, there is other facilities with much more traffic and uh, more infrastructure, and, you know, it, it's a possibility there, so you are right, it is, it is cheaper. But and the gas is cheaper. I guess it's a little bit cheaper. That is true. <laughs> so we we vetted this out. So we know we're cheap. That part we do know. Um, we know that it, it, it leads to savings for you. It's in the middle of every major thoroughfare in North Central Florida, and it's a heck of a good place for you to start your business. Consider the fact that you're getting your rent cut in half. That's my comment. Everyone else may feel differently, but uh, I just want the record to reflect my comments. And we'd love for you to be here for 20 years. I would love and, that. You know, and we want to see that happen. I don't think it's anybody on this commission that doesn't want to see your business come and see you succeed. And, and I can tell you, for me, to see you as a young man stand before us and be as confident and articulate as you are, for me, it's a great thing. And you know, we want to see that business succeed. We want you here in Palatka. And I think we're taking the appropriate steps to incentivize your move. Um, but I also think that at the end of the day, you got to understand that in business, it, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense overall. Government kind of has a relaxed standard, unfortunately. But for us, you know, we want to make sure that we're not giving away the baby with the bathwater. We want to make sure that you're put in a position where you can succeed, and we just want to make sure that we're being responsible with the dollars that come from this, from this, from the taxes in this community. And I think with all those things in place. For me, I'd feel a heck of a lot better if I had a young man sitting in front of me who says, I know I can sustain this thing for two years, and I can make it work. And we believe that, and I stand here strongly to say that a two-year lease is an out of the realm of possibilities. Most businesses take three years before you figure out whether you're going to succeed or fail, not six months. And you've already been operating, so you've got some idea as to what you're doing. And the only thing this can do is enhance your operation. So that's just my... That's just my consideration. Is there any more um, comments from the commission? I, I wholeheartedly agree um, with, with what you said, but I, I'm just a, I, and I know my comment last time and your comment was, look, if you are a full hand customer uh, or whatever. <laughs> but I think my question is, what changed from Thursday to now with the possibilities of you? Um, extend the lease. That's what I'm a little bit concerned about. Well, you, well, you have a partner in this, and uh, if he could be here, you know, this would be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. uh, out of respect for him, I didn't want to give you an official answer because it, I don't think that's the right way to do business. Right, and, so, I, and, I, and I say that then, but again, if you, if, understanding that you do have a business partner and understanding that you do, um, again, I mean, it's, it's literally we're slicing something in half for six months with the hopes of you, with the hopes of you um, going off your words saying that you want you want to extend after you continue to pay. Again, in order to, in order for me to feel comfortable, I just need a little bit more of commitment on that end. I mean, insurance, yeah, but for uh, the level of commitment that we have with anything, it's, it, uh, we've done it with every other person that has come before us, and we just need to see that level of commitment, especially with what we're putting in. I can understand why you'd want to see that. I, I do have trouble understanding why this particular building 
is uh, necessary for a two or three year lease, it seems I'm, to me. I'm not worried about the building. I'm worried about people who come before us wanting us to do something for them, and they're not essentially doing anything for us in return. But we're still the ones that are putting everything out. That's what I have a concern with. It can be you. It could be somebody else coming from around the corner that have, want the same thing. We, I would still want the that to be you know in the forefront of everything. Even if it was me coming before the commission, if they want to see me, you know, have a greater commitment to making sure that the business that I want to bring to the city is, you know, I have to do it. I understand that. And I, I do think maybe I wasn't clear enough uh, on Thursday when I expressed what I would like to do for the city in return. Um, I, I don't know if you've been to the property or, or seen the building. It's in pretty decent shape, but it needs some work. It's not been rented for a while. We've got softening hanging down, some holes in the drywall. We've got some carpets that need to get cleaned. It needs to be painted and power washed. I'm not a contractor, but I estimate at $80 an hour, it's going to cost maybe $2,700 to $3,000 to fix this. I'm willing to do it for you. I have six students that are waiting to get started right now. And if they all flew 40 hours, this is just off the airplane, you're looking at $45,000 in gross revenue. That's 7% sales tax on that airplane. When the students come in here, they're not just here for an hour, they're buying food in your city. Sometimes they just take an afternoon and they might go around and see some other things. Uh, and a lot of my students have gone on to purchase an airplane and then put it in a hangar at Black. So think about what we're bringing besides just the half rent for six months. This building is bringing a lot more focus to the Black Airport. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people I've brought out there and they said, God, this is great. I can't believe it's here. I didn't know about it. Well, I want to put this thing on the map for you guys and really, you know, you're going to see some income here. And flight schools aren't the easiest thing to move either. Once they're in, uh, they're in. You know, that's, that's a hard thing to move. Further support from my points. Again, I, what I like to see, you know, and I support you wholeheartedly, um, but again, some skin in the game, like you want to put some renovation in there, I, we will have to probably run that by our attorney to make sure that whatever renovations you're putting in, it does conform with um, the policy or safety and the like. So we need to make sure that that is clear. But I'd like to see that $7,000 is investment from the city to put that um, AC unit in there. Two years, I can see it being paid off, you know, with the rent and your, your gas. Or after, I mean, fuel. I would think, you know, if we maybe put a clause in there, if you wanted to do one year, put some clause in there and say, hey, well, we split the split the cost of the unit, thirty five hundred dollars. So that way, we don't take the full seven thousand dollar hit if if they decided not to go for the second year. But I think that was something we clarified in the last meeting that we were going to be doing that anyway. Right, because we would. I mean, we were eventually we would have to do it, but the, I think the reasoning of that is being expedited is because we're trying to operate. We're trying to, and I and I agree, but I just want to make Getting sure that open by September first. Right, right, right. right. Well, well, just let me make, make one mention. There's nothing in the lease, and this is the first time I've even heard that the lessee is looking at making three thousand dollars worth of repairs. The lease, what? the lease says that the city's going to make all repairs that are outside of the wall, roof, structure, at, at a city expense. And, and, the, and the only thing the lessee's going to do is light switches and bulbs and things of that nature. So, I mean, that's a new, that's a new issue that hasn't, that wasn't even Mitchell raised to me before, before right now. And strictly, under the lease, it wouldn't be something I could enforce. So just, just in terms of, and I realize everybody uh, is looking to try to make something good happen, and, and but but for me, I have to rely upon what's in the written document. That's what I'll fall back on in six months or a year from now. If something goes south, I've got to fall back on what's here. It won't be what everybody thought they were intending or the yeah. little fuzzy feeling that everybody has about starting a new venture. And, I, and that's just that's just the hard and fact life of it. The hard and and the life of it for me, the fact of it for me. So, with that said, if he's talking about doing three thousand dollars repairs up front, then you know we ought to add that to the agreement. And let me make a point that, that 
no matter what happens, we've got to repair that air conditioning system to keep mold out of the building. So no matter what happens, that, that is not, it's not like it was a, you know, not working and we weren't planning on fixing it. We we'll have to fix this air conditioner no matter what happens. We have to process it. Okay. So. I was learning, is it not possible to talk to your partner to find out if you all can work out the two year lease that another year for you all to be in here? Um, I don't believe that's going to go. We've discussed it all weekend, and it's it's not in the it's not in the cards for us. So, so, so forgive me, but again, I, I have to look at from a legal perspective. You've got a new startup LLC, which has no assets. I was told early on that y'all wouldn't personally guarantee the obligations of the lease. So as I'm sitting here right now, I'm looking at a entity that's going to be lessee with no assets that really couldn't, if I sued, I couldn't get anything from anyway, in all probability, if I had to sue. No one will personally guarantee the lease, so you've got no personal skin in the game. And even in spite of all that, you won't go a two-year lease. Now, it's hard for me having been where I have been for the last 40 years, to see a lot of skin in the game from your perspective or a lot of confidence from your perspective that you're going to be making an operation go in spite of everything you just said. And we all also know that having a high traffic area for airplanes isn't a good place for a flight school. Having a low traffic air, uh, area for airplanes is a good thing for a flight school, which is what you got out here. That's true. Uh, this practice area is a 10 minute flight from all the other airports on the East Coast. And when I said high traffic, I meant high vehicle traffic. People who are going to pass that. by and say, oh, I think I'll take a lesson today. Gotcha. And they become a student. Okay, sorry. Um, we brought this back for purposes of seeing if we can make this go. Had the conversation. Are there any other questions, comments, or concerns from the commission? Have we uh, leased anybody else uh, properties for the year lease? We have. I don't believe the helicopter operator that was a one year lease out of that building. He didn't ask for concessions either, did he? No, he left holes in the wall when he left it. He didn't leave it. He didn't leave six months rental, too. Okay. So, um,. Yeah. 
it's still going to be a twelve month lease because it's never issued. Right, it's it's not really a it's not really a multi year lease. It's just as we're going to we're going to make everybody feel better by saying we're going to talk about extending after a year, but you can't enforce it. And so. Okay, who's going to make this motion? I'll make the motion that we let them do it for you. That we need your lease. I think that we need to have a chance to get some new businesses in here. There's a motion on the floor to enter into a one year lease agreement for the operation of the flight school. Is there a second? Is there a second? Seeing none, motion fails. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you succeed. I want to. I want to believe in you. Are you open to eighteen months since you get six months free? Right now. That's what I was trying to say. Come on, Gaddy. Is that something you can decide without this partner being here? It's just the same. I can only make fifty percent of that decision. I don't have. You gonna make a phone call? I think I could. That's all. Come back. We're gonna stay in recess for for three minutes. Give me five. <laughs> yeah, the guy that is sick and he's back. Well, we still agree with 12 months is the is all we're willing to give you. Okay. Um, I'll make the motion that we do not accept this. We just. Is there a motion on the floor? Second. And a second. Is there any further discussion? For me, I, I want to see them succeed. Um, Who's John? This John? So, no, it's Parker. No, so, no, so I, I, Parker's I, name I, is also John. I, I think, I mean, none of us don't, I mean, we, not, we all want to see them succeed. However, I just feel that there's nothing from that. We could have made this vote the other day. I mean, I don't really truly think that there was nothing that came back to us that was different outside of a few numbers. Like, I don't think that, that you, I don't think that you all, I mean, I'm not saying that from, I'll say from my, from what I'm gathering, you know, you want us to do something, but then again, on the outside, you're not really doing anything for us. Yeah, you're saying that all of these things are gonna happen, but there's no guarantee. Just like there's no guarantee of the success of your company, which we want it to be successful, but there's no guarantee that you're gonna have somebody that drive by the airport and see a, a, a an airplane flying and stops and saying that I want to take an airplane lesson today. You're not. There's no guarantee for any of that. And even if we could say no, you don't pay the twenty eight the, the twenty eight three thousand dollars or whatever it is that you want to pay them to fix the what you call. I mean to fix the to renovate that. to renovate the building. We I mean we we don't we didn't ask you to do that. So I think those things can still be taken into consideration, and that money can be put elsewhere, which could be put towards the extending of that time frame. You know, I just feel like I don't, I, the time, it, we've always been talking about skin in the game here. And right now, I don't feel like you have skin in the game. I'm sorry that you feel that way. You don't have to be sorry okay. at all. Okay. So, um, based on the calculations, uh, the rental income of the 12 month period looks like it's going to be a little over 11,000 bucks. Um, Minus whatever you do with repairs, so um, somewhere around four to five thousand dollars in rental income for the twelve month period that you're going to have. Um, so, with that being said, any further discussion from the commission? I've got a question about the, I guess the fuel in terms of what we would get back on the field based on the number if we just did this just an average of how many flights per day and the amount of fuel what would that look like nobody had it yeah uh, i have looked at that every lesson cost me approximately fifty dollars in fuel if we call that about eight gallons is that correct based on your prices there um and, th and that's a pretty conservative average it depends on what you're going to do with the airplane but I can tell you on average that's each lesson and I'm expecting about four lessons per day when this thing opens. So $200 in fuel sales there. 
And you're operating five days a week? Six days a week. fly in and out as much as they want anyway and he just used it and, and, and had the people in the air, airplane anyways and just not came before us with that what would that look like if he rented no I'm just saying if he rented if he if he rented the space for office space put the contract out there we have people who come in all the time with flights. They don't have to check in with anybody or whatever. And he and he and he used that use his airplane to just so care, in other words, care, care how, are we going to be inspecting to <clears throat> make sure that he's still not using our building? Is what, that what you're trying to say? Well, no, no. Oh, just okay. just period. That that's how the operation work in terms of our lease agreement. How do we do check and balances with the people who are currently out there and what what they're doing? Because he could have really just got the building. So he could he just run a legal flight school. That's what well, I'm getting at. Well, that's right. what. Well, basically, that's what he could have just rented the space. And still ran the operation because we don't really inspect what people do out there as it relates to that. He could have, for, for the purposes of what we're doing, let's stick to this motion and let's make a decision based on the motion that's on the floor. Well, we was on a comment, weren't we? We are, but the comments have to pertain to the motion. Yeah, the comment was an open comment. Okay, well, we want to close it and make it pertain to this motion because the motion is to deny. And so, as it pertains not to the operation of the business, but as it pertains to whether we're going to accept it or not, what's on the table? Okay, I have one more question. Um, if we let him go in there and he left, what what would we lose? If we did repairs and stuff on the building, the building would be there for somebody else to use without um, having to do it, and it would be in better shape than what it's in now. And he would have been in there and paid something, and there's nothing being paid. Or nobody in that building, and nobody's been in there for a while. So, what what's the downside to to uh, the rental if he leaves? The only downside to me is if something happens. That's the, that's the only downside. Fear of you? No. But that's it. Any more discussion on the motion? Who second? I might second. I did. Motion yeah. second. Commissioner McCaskill. Seeing no further discussion, roll call. Commissioner Gordon. No. Commissioner McCaskill. No. Commissioner Campbell. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Go back, Ken. I'm so I'm so sorry. So what? 
Yes. 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 The motion or second motion. Yes. 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 I like to make a motion. I like to make a motion that you consider the 18 month term, work with your partner. Um, if it's something that you really wanted to pursue, six months is not really something that, and we're giving you six months, like uh, the mayor said. I, I, we really want to see you see, see you succeed. So in that, we're not telling you no to go away. We really want to bring things to Palata. So if, I want to make a motion that you um, come back with a, at least an 18 month um, agreement. That's my motion. Your motion is authorize is authorize the city to enter into an 18 month agreement with the flight school. Um, with the provisions based upon the discussion, the recommendation of council to be included in that. Correct. All right. So motion on the floor is a second. Second by Vice Mayor Brown. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Roll call. Commissioner Boyd. Yes. Commissioner McCaskey. Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs>